Hey everybody, this is Daryl, a.k.a. The D from the Simply Incredible Podcast. And today I'm here to give you guys a little review of Big Lit Comic Con and my haul from that, plus my haul from uh, a couple other places while I was in Roanoke. Uh, first of all, uh, Big Lit Comic Con. Huge disappointment. Um, I, I'll be honest, I went into it with low to actually negative thoughts about it because I didn't expect much from it. Uh, then when I get there, ticket prices were too high to begin with. I know a lot of other people were saying they didn't think it was too high. For this, the small size show this was, um, $13 was too high. Uh, and this is the first Comic-Con that I've been to where uh, if you bought tickets online, it was almost twice as much as if you bought them um offline which i thought was really what not twice as much excuse me about 50 percent more it's about 50 percent more uh they were it was a six dollar fee if you bought them online beforehand and if you bought them day of at the con it was 13 dollars with no service charge i thought that was kind of ridiculous to begin with but anyway there's more uh you guys know i'm a kidney transplant recipient so i always have to have fluids with me my water always Whenever I go to a con or go anywhere I'm going to be out, I have water with me. Always. So I'm going in and they're checking bags. Fine. Good. Check bags. I want you to check bags. And she uh, she goes, you can't have water. And I explained to her my situation. And she says, no, nope, can't have water. And I explained to her one more time. I was like, look, this is actually a medical thing. If I don't have water, it could influence my kidney transplant. Which every other con I've ever been to has never been a problem. After I explained it to them, they were like, oh, that's cool. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, to me, that's the equivalent of someone with diabetes you know, and having low blood sugar. And they say, look, we sell food inside. So if your blood pressure drops, you can't have insulin. Just eat some food. You know, just buy some food and eat it. I'm like, this is a medical condition that I have. Okay. And so, you know, I mean, I was getting really mad that I legitimately was about to hand her the, the ticket I just bought five seconds earlier and just left. I was so mad. Um, but I did. Then I go in uh, right off the bat. I see one dealer that I know. Awesome guy. Um, but yeah, today he just didn't have anything that I was really looking for. Uh, then, then I'm going around. It turns out there may have been eight comic book dealers there maybe i don't think it was that many and so i'm like gosh man are you serious this is awful this is absolutely awful and when it's all said and done i'm gonna show you my haul now there i've showed you my haul that i got at the comic con i i spent 13 dollars and threw away two bottles of water got nothing got absolutely nothing um now, one of the things that was not the Comic-Con's fault was the prices people were charging for stuff. Uh, I was looking at some books and um, I was like, are you serious? Uh, they were charging multiple hundred dollars too much on a couple of books I was looking for. I was like, dang, I guess I should have bought it in San Diego and, and uh, mailed it back and it would have been cheaper. A lot cheaper. Which surprised me that there were things cheaper in San Diego at San Diego Comic-Con compared to this little big lit Comic-Con totally shocked me there but i mean for me it was absolutely horrible literally the worst convention i've ever been to one of my friends was like what are you talking about it was one of the best ones i've ever been to I was like what did you see that i didn't see i talked to uh to, i know two other people both of them was like dude this was horrible this is the worst one i've ever been to and actually one of my friends uh his wife was like dude that was terrible she, she she doesn't even care for comic cons to begin with and she was like that was horrible so you know take with a grain of salt there's no way they'll ever get any money from me again it was absolutely horrible no way i'll go back to that show other people again said they had a great time somewhere in between i'm guessing i'm guessing somewhere in between uh they did have a couple of artists there and um honestly i didn't know who they were uh, and one of my friends was like, uh, the one guy created, uh, was the creator for Ra's al Ghul. I was like, oh, really? I didn't even know that. And he was charging way too much for stuff. Uh, there's a, an actor, and this cracks me up every time I think about this, but uh, he, I've only seen him at Roanoke uh, conventions. And he, he was a, a zombie in like one episode of The Walking Dead. <laughs> so, I don't know. 
Uh, then from Stranger Things, the um, the uh, teacher, the uh, the audio video teacher that helped the kids out in a couple episodes, he was there signing autographs as well. So, again, for me, horrible show. From other people, they thought it was pretty good. You know, take it which way you want. But I, again, one of the worst ones I've ever been to. Now, I left the convention, uh, and I, I was still so mad. But I was like, I'm going to hit a couple of places while I'm still here. Found some pretty cool stuff. Uh, we'll start off with a couple of statues I picked up first. Uh, and then some comic books as well. Uh, I found this one at uh, one of the stores there. And I was like, oh man, that's pretty cool. So I went and picked this up. Uh, 2016 convention exclusive. Uh, Batman Unmasked. Looks awesome. There's a side of it, which I, I like these boxes where they kind of show side to side. There's the back on there. And there's the other side. And this is from uh, Arkham Knight, as you can see right there. And it's pretty cool because it was limited to only 1,000. Number 618 out of 1,000. Uh, plus inside, uh, it has, I checked to be sure that this was in here. <clears throat> does come with a COA with the number and everything on it. So I was like, heck yeah, I'll go ahead and pick that up. Uh, I got a pretty decent deal on that. Um, yeah, it's one of those things I can probably find cheaper on eBay, but after shipping, it's gonna be pretty close. So I may pay a smidge over on that, but it's right there. Uh, the next statue I picked up was, uh, this is gonna shock everybody right here. <laughs> I picked up a Harley Quinn statue. Thought that was pretty cool. And you can take off one of the hands and put a bomb in the hand, which I thought was kind of cool. There we go. There's Harley. It is a Quinzel. There's the backside of it. Literally the backside. There we go. And it is from Injustice 2. And this one was only on, uh, what was it? 500. 500 was made that's number 47 out of 500 and yes it also has a coa pretty much just like the other one so there we go there we go harley quinn the red jacket in justice 2 47 out of 500 so there we go so that was the cool statues i guess i thought those were awesome uh, while I was at that shop, I went ahead and picked up a few comics while I was there. Uh, all of these except one are dollar comics because uh, the new books are, are, wall are uh, cover price. So we start off with DC first. We have Batgirl and Joker. There we go. Some of these will have price stickers on it, but that is not the price they were, by the way. Stay, don't go anywhere. <clears throat> Next, these are some books I've kind of been looking at, seeing if I could find some here and there. Uh, this is Gen 13, and I believe uh, this is J. Scott Campbell uh, art on this one, I think. Yeah, and it is a wraparound cover, so I thought that was pretty cool. That's an awesome cover, J. Scott Campbell. Uh, what year was this one? Does it say on the back? 94, I believe. Yeah, I think this was 94. Yeah. There you go. Because I'm pretty sure it says, uh, where's that? Campbell 94 right there. No, and that's right. Yeah, right there. So I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, J. Scott Campbell, 20 plus year old uh, artwork. And... Let's see, what else did we get in the world of the comic books? Uh, Gen 13 Ordinary Heroes. Uh, this is Adam Hughes artwork, and that is very much Adam Hughes artwork. And you guys see Adam Hughes artwork. It's, it's definitely got um, a style to it, and this is very much Adam Hughes. And... Uh, I'll try to figure out what year this was. This is somewhere in that similar range. Maybe this is maybe 2000s, maybe. Let's find out. I 
I need better eyes so I can see these things better. Uh, this is from 1995. I believe he did the artwork inside as well, I think. It's pretty cool artwork. It's kind of dark there. Pretty cool. Awesome stuff there. He might have, uh, yeah, I don't think he, yeah, I think he might have done everything on this, the inside interior artwork, as well as the cover. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. Again, dollar book. Uh, let's see. This one, I just thought the cover was awesome. It is our Dark Rain. The Dark Rain series is pretty, pretty strong artwork in particular. But this is a Marvel one shot, the Green Goblin. That's an awesome cover on there. So I was like, heck yeah, definitely pick that up. That looks awesome. Uh, the Goblin Legacy, not Green Goblin, the Goblin Legacy. My bad. <laughs> Next, this is the second appearance of. Can I think of this lady's name? She later becomes a uh, Snake Eyes. There you go. G.I. Joe number 227. Number 226 was her first appearance. 244 was her first appearance as Snake Eyes. So some of these I definitely want to uh, start picking up. There we go. Because the, the especially the artwork on these more recent issues look phenomenal. And now some Kevin Smith stuff here. Let's see. Put these in order. There we go. <clears throat> Uh, Kevin Smith, along with Jonathan Lau, the Green Hornet, uh, one dollar. This is number one. Right there. I love this artwork. I think this is, um, pretty sure this is, uh, Alex Ross cover, issue two. Actually, I actually think all these are Alex Ross, now that I'm looking at them. Is this one? Uh, issue one may not have been Alex Ross. But issue two, I'm pretty sure that's Alex Ross. Uh, issue three. Right there. Issue four. There's some awesome artwork on here. Uh, this is not uh, Alex Ross here. Definitely not Alex Ross. For number five. Well, I want to see if some of these are variant issues. This come out in 2010, by the way. Now, it looks like these are all newsstand, unless they just didn't um, put the regular uh, logo um, barcodes on them. Next is number six. There we go. That's, yeah, that's definitely Alex Ross right there. Number seven, also definitely Alex Ross. So I'm guessing some of these are A covers or, or B covers or something because I wouldn't think that Alex would do some, then not, then skip some. I wouldn't think, but you never know. Uh, number eight. Actually, I can't find out. <laughs> Afterwards, I'll find out what's what on here. These all say two ninety five, dollars but they were all dollar bin books. Uh, number nine. There we go. And number 10. So I picked up the first 10 of the Green Hornet, the uh, Kevin Smith run, plus uh, annual number one, which is an awesome cover. Brett Reed. Awesome cover on that. You can see on it that it's. Hmm. So I was looking at that logo. It's definitely not direct. I don't know if they only put those kind of barcodes on them or not. I'm not sure. And last, I went ahead and picked this up. I, I'm not sure if I ordered this uh, for this week or not. It is uh, Spawn number 288. Went ahead and picked up that Matina sketch cover. Because honestly, I don't think I picked it up. Looks awesome. Because I think they only had the A cover and then they had a B and C, I think. I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure. But I'll have to check and see. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, and uh, I was on my way back, and it's about an hour trip uh, down there, hour trip back. And so I was about uh, 15, 20 minutes on my way back. One of my friends, he sends me a, a text with a picture on it. So I was actually at a stoplight, and I looked at it, I was like, oh. <laughs> and uh, I was like, dang it, I got to turn around and go back. So at Hot Topic, they had this Harley Quinn uh, Metallic Exclusive. Now I picked up from GameStop online the, uh, was it purple and gold variant on this one? But that metallic looks really, really cool. Really, really nice. And you guys know I am a certified Harley whore. I know that's not for the children. Don't use that for the children. But <laughs> there we go. But got the metallic one. There is a red and um, uh, red and blue one out there somewhere that I need to see if I can find that too. Which is, I think, the basic one that I know uh, Books a Million has a... Uh, I think they call it the red, white, and blue one because they had one last year for that one and one this year for this one. So I'm going to probably end up having to order that since Books a Million is about uh, an hour and a half away. So, yeah, be easier and cheaper to order it than to drive all the way up there. Uh, let's see. Anything else? That's all she wrote. <laughs> you guys have an incredible day.